Hi there. In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and learn about lines and polylines, and we're also going to learn about the join and explode command. Okay? So, there's three different types of line commands I'm going to cover in this particular lesson. And once again, I'm going to... Uh, this is a good example. Now you notice here, this is just a happy accident, you notice right now none of my icons really look the way that I'd like them to look. Right? And the reason for that is I had my drafting toolbar selected, or my drafting tab selected, excuse me. And that allows me to do all sorts of things that have to do with drafting. You'll notice there's a lot of different things here that look like they are basically line types, and they are, and you can actually find the single line command in there. You could probably find the polyline if we look hard enough. Right? But I'm going to go back to my standard tab, and now everything here looks the way you're probably used to seeing it. Okay. Once again, I'm going to click on that triangle there, and I'm going to drag out my um, toolbar. Okay, I can also, as you recall, go to the curve menu and find different ways to draw single lines here. Okay, but another thing I haven't really discussed yet is you notice that if I hover over these icons, it'll tell me basically what that command is. So if I hover over this first one, it'll say that is a single line. If we look at the icon of the little mouse there. That means if I left click, I can get a single single line. So I'm going to left click over that, go over here to my line, and draw a single line. Now remember, I'd like to draw it, well, I didn't say I'd like to, but I, in this case, I want it to be totally parallel with the x-axis. So to do that, I'm going to lock my ortho, and I can do that by holding down the shift command, and I can draw a straight line. I can also go down here. These are some modeling aids. And I could click on this little thing right here that says ortho. And if I repeat that command, I can only draw in an ortho direction. That will lock me in terms of either going up or going down. Now, I typically don't like to leave the ortho on. Of course, if I'd like it to not be on, I can hold down shift and that will release it. But for the most part, I leave it off. And if I need to draw, a line that is parallel or locked into one of those ortho positions, I'll hold down the shift. Okay? Now, if I go over here to my polyline, you'll notice I have two options. If I left click, I'll get a polyline, and I'll go ahead and do that. Click, 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 click. And to finish my line, I will hit enter. Right? And if I hover over this and I right click, I'll get what are called line segments. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back in here and I can go ahead and I can begin to click and I'm drawing a series of segments of lines and now I'm going to hit enter to finish my command. Now watch this. We've talked about selecting. If I click on my polyline I have one line that has a bunch of segments in it. If I click on my line segments here each one of these lines That little thing that was just on was called a gumball. I'm going to talk about that in a later lesson. I find it a little distracting early on when we're trying to learn things. As I click on the line segments, each one of these segments is individual, right? I can select it and pull it, and only that segment and only those segments will move, okay? Now, if I hit Control z once and twice, it will put those segments back. Now notice what happens here on the polyline. If I select that, all of it will move. Okay? So this is one object. This is a series of single lines, single objects, or single curves. Now, there are two icons over here. One of them is called the join icon, and the other one is called the explode icon. <coughs> Excuse me. If I do a crossing window from the lower left to the upper right, and I select all of these line segments, I can click on this little puzzle piece, which is called Join, and that will, now once I click on this, allow all of these to be a single object. I can move them all at the same time. Okay. Now, if I select this one, and I go over here to this little explosion, so notice the Join and Explode are right next to each other, and I click on that, that will allow all of these segments to become individual. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead, select my polyline again, and join it. Okay. Now, a lot of times what will happen is you may need to just um, select something or deselect something, right? I'm going to talk a little bit about selection and deselection. So if I need to select more than one thing, if I, uh, you notice I can only select one thing at a time if I click on them. But if I click on one thing, hold down my shift command, select another one, and another one, and another one, I can continue to click on things, even including my text, right? I can select all of these things by holding down shift. Now, if for some reason I decided, oh, I didn't actually want to select my text right here, I can hold down the control key and click, and I can deselect. So I'm going control click, control click, control click. And now I just hit a, I just clicked without holding the control down, and I deselected everything. So I'm going to select a few other things, right? Those are all, all selected. Now to deselect, I'm going to hold down my control key and hit click, all right? So now with these things selected, I can move them both simultaneously, or I can do other options on them, okay? So sometimes when it comes to selection, you can just click the object. Now you notice that these pieces of text here are all single objects. So sometimes doing a crossing window from the lower left to the upper right, or the upper left to the lower right will allow you to do your selections. We'll get back to selections a little bit more uh, uh, later. The last thing I want to talk about is sometimes you want to only remove one particular piece of an object, right? What I could do is I could say, all right, I want to explode that and then maybe get rid of that thing. I'll just hit the delete command. And now what I'd have to do is I'd have to select that go over and join it, select that, go over and join it, which can be a little troublesome. I'm going to just select both of these and explode them, right? So another way to do it is I could select them both, go over and join them, right? But let's say I didn't want to go through that. What I could do is I could select this entire thing. I could hit the explode command. Now you notice everything here is still selected. That's one of the great things about the workflow in Rhino is the way objects can stay selected for extended periods of time. Now watch this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to deselect one of these. So to deselect I will hold down my control key, click that object, and it's been deselected. right? And now with that object deselected I can go back over here, hit the join, and now these two objects here, that one and that one, have been joined or are joined. I can take the one object I don't need and I can delete it. Okay, so in this uh, lesson we've learned a little bit about a couple different line types, the single line and the polyline, as well as the line segments. And we've also learned how to join and explode. The last thing I want to talk about is the type of lines that you can and cannot join. Right? Notice that these lines here are not actually connected. They're intersecting with each other, but they, because they're not joined, because they're not meeting at the very, very end, you cannot join them. Right? So I'm going to select those three lines. I'm going to go over here to join, and it's going to say it's unable to join curves. Okay, we're going to talk more about that in the next lesson. But in the meantime, we've learned about the join and explode command. We've learned about the line, the polyline, and the line segments. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next lesson.